Today I'm going to look at a plasma TV. Now I'm no plasma TV expert. In fact, I've probably only fixed about 10 plasma TVs in my entire career in electronics. It's not something I do a lot of. You've seen them all here. Every one that I've fixed, I've fixed on here. We're going to try another one today and see if I can get this one going. So I've got this Panasonic plasma TV here. It's a 46 inch. Haven't tried it yet. This is the first attempt to power this up and nothing happens. Completely dead. I wonder if my remote's actually working. We'll try it again with some fresh batteries. See if anything clicks. Okay, power light just clicked on. Ten blinks. Watch the code. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have a, a ten blink shutdown. Let's go look up the code for that and see what the ten blink shutdown is on a Panasonic Plasma. Incidentally, this was a TCP 46 S2 2010 model. When I looked up my, my cheater code list it shows 10 flashes is an over voltage on the 3.3 or 5.5 volt supply to the A board so let's um, pull this thing apart I have a visitor in here wonder if the visitor is going to make an appearance you gonna jump up there you gonna jump up you gonna jump up here you gonna go on camera cat sitting in my chair This cat thinks he's a Siamese. Sure meows like one. Doesn't look like one though. Okay, let's get the back off this set and see what uh, the problem is. Okay, diagnostics show that the problem's on the A board, which is gonna be this board here. We have our common sustain, or SS board over here. On the other side over here, we've got the uh, other sustain board, the Y sustain the upper driver board, the lower driver board, power supply, and these ones are the C board down here. Looks like our problem is going to be probably on this board. Let's power this set up and see if we get any of our power indicators. There should be some green lights that come on on both of the sustain boards to tell us that the power supply is working properly for them. Okay, got a green light down here. You can see it. There's another green light over there. That's indicating that the power supply is working. It's putting out the voltage for the two sustain boards to drive the panel. Now it'll go off because it's gone into shutdown mode. Looks like it's being shut down by the main, the brains of the set, the A board, which has got your microprocessor. And the, the fault code showed a power supply over voltage or a failure of the A board is what's showing in the fault code. Okay, what I've observed is I have a 5 volt supply, which is correct. I have a 3.3 volt supply. As soon as I turn on the power, the 3.3 volt, 3 .3 volt supply drops, which I think is what's signaling the power supply to turn on. Power supply turns on and then turns off. I see the voltage jump up to 200, about 207 volts for both the sustain boards, and then it shuts off. So I'm just checking some of the voltages here. I think one of the first things I'm going to do, I'm just going to reseat the ribbon connectors here just in case there's a communication failure from one board to the next. That will certainly cause a shutdown scenario. So I'm just going to uh, double check all the connectors to make sure that uh, there's good communication between the boards. And then we'll try it again and see if we have any improvement. So to do that, I'm just going to lift up the connector here. Okay. This is a zero insertion force, so we just lift up the socket and we just take the connector off and reseat it. Let's see if we get any change in the way that this thing operates. And it's off again so it's not that so I've done a little bit of research and um, 
The 10 blink code for this model is one of four things that will trigger that. There's a, a 5 volt uh, SOS, they're all SOS's, but uh, sub 5 volts on the A board, sub 3.3 on the SC board, which is this one over here, A board's here, SC board's there, uh, the sub 9 uh, on the SS board, and the tuner power is uh, missing or low or high. Doesn't doesn't differentiate over voltage or under voltage, it's just that's where the faults are. So we need to confirm that we have these voltages at startup. Because if any of those voltages are low or high or missing, it's gonna shut the set down with that code. So let's uh let's investigate. We'll look and see if we can see some missing voltages here. I've got the service manual for this unit. Checking the service manual, I should have 15 volts. Chair out of the way so I can actually get in here. I should have 15 volts on pin number four going over to the SS board. This is my 15 volt supply from the power supply. Hit the power button. No 15 volt supply. We're on to something. It's going to go and look at the schematic again. I've got it on my on my computer. I should probably throw it onto my, my tablet so I can just bring it in here. But I'm looking at it on my computer and just kind of making notes. It's 124 pages, so I'm not going to print the manual off for this thing. So I'm just kind of looking at it, but and then coming back and doing tests. So first voltage test we've done is the 15 volt supply is missing. That would explain why the TV is shutting down. Maybe something on the power supply is at fault. D351 is the uh, 15 volt rectifier, which is right here. So I'm just going to hit the power button. We'll see if we get any voltage coming off. And I got zero. Oh, wait a minute, it came on. It did come on, so I have voltage there. And then it shut off. But it didn't, it's not getting past. Now this Q355 is a MOSFET. Where is that? It switches it. So the 15 volt supply came on here momentarily. I was looking for it. There's a, there should be a MOSFET here. Uh, Q355. This is it right here. It's a MOSFET here that uh, controls the power. Switched off this diode here. Okay, that that didn't come up. It only came up to 0.1 volts. We measure it right on the rectifier coming off of the the uh, transformer right here. You guys can probably see the meter. Watch it when I fire it up. It's momentarily going to come on. There it goes. Okay, and then it shuts off. It's actually going high. It's going up to like 19 volts, so it might even be going into an over voltage. Although the other side of this MOSFET, which is really hard to see on this particular ridiculously poor schematic, but it's controlled by there's an IC that controls it here. This is for regulation. And this, this MOSFET transistor here is to regulate the 15 volt line. And I'm not getting anything. I've got voltage here. I've got voltage here on the diode, but I've got nothing over on this side. So, uh, <clears throat> something in this circuit here might be causing the problem. What I do see when I go to power the setup, this is the 15 volt test point here that supplies power over to the A board, as well as to the SS board. Just like on the, uh, the drain, I see it attempt, voltage to attempt to come on, and then go off. So it could be something is on the A board is loading this down, or it still could be the power supply that's a fault. So that's the next the next thing to investigate is perhaps I'll break the connection here. This is a fusible resistor that'll take the A board A board's 15 volt supply offline and see whether the 15 volts returns to the SS board. And if it does, 
then we know that there's a fault somewhere on the A board over here that's loading it down. Because the 15 volt supply comes in on pins 1 and 2 of this connector here. So first things first, we'll disconnect the 15 volt switched line from the A board and see whether we still have a problem. So as you can see I've cut R757 one side off that supplies the 15 volts down to this connector to the A board. Let's uh, watch what happens when I try powering it up now while monitoring the 15 volt rail that's going to the SS board. So I've got my meter on the 15 volt rail. Watch the meter. We'll try it. This is the first time I powered this up. Let's see whether we get any attempt at the 15 volts to start. Aha! We did. Okay. So we got eight, 8 volts showing, but then it was off pretty quick. I think our voltage is getting there, because with the A board disconnected, we're getting some voltage going or on the 15 volt rail, whereas we weren't before. So we have a load on the A board. Now time to investigate where the 15 volt supply goes on this board and see if we can isolate it a little bit further but we're making some progress on this challenging set okay to prove my theory that uh, there's a short on the A board there's multiple 15 volt supplies going to the A board I've, I've disconnected pin number three just cut the wire which is one of the 15 volt supplies to the A board Watch what happens when I hit the power button now. Monitoring the 15 volt rail. So we have 15.5 volts. Now the TV will shut down and now we have a blink code of 2 indicating loss of 15 volt supply. Now this 15 volt supply here on the, on the um, A board this is what drives all the regulators for the lower voltages so we may have a shorted regulator on here or something on this board that is pulling that 15 volt uh, supply down because with this wire connected it goes into an immediate shutdown that doesn't even start the 15 volt supply as soon as it attempts to start it goes into overcurrent shutdown which is what this what this resistor is for is this is a current sense loop so that if there's too much current drawn on pin number three from connector P6 if the current is too high, uh, it will trigger a transistor, which is off of the uh, current sensing resistor here, which will immediately shut the power supply down to protect it. So we've removed the load, and now the power supply is no longer shutting down. So now we're chasing something on the A board. A board is not going to be an easy one to troubleshoot because it's this is the brains of the set. It could be anything. It could be one of the ICs that shot. Uh, it could even be with the tuner. It could be pretty much anything that's on that 15 volt rail, or any of the or any of the regulated supplies that is sourced from that 15 volt rail. But somewhere on here, there's a short. Let's see whether we can find the short on here. As I say, I'm not holding my breath that I'm going to be able to solve it, being on the most complex board on the set. But we'll give it a shot. But I know now. If I change the A board, this set's going to work. Whether I'm going to go down that road of changing the A board on this TV or not, that remains to be seen. If I can actually find the component that's at fault on here, then maybe we can go about changing that. But this being such a complex board, you got everything buried. You've got all these system on chips and processing uh, for everything. All the signal processing is on here. So it could be pretty much anything on here. But something's loading it down. So I'm going through the schematic and taking a look at things and we'll try and isolate it a little bit more and see if I can find it as one of the regulators on here that's shorting out. Okay, I've got the A board out. We're looking at pin number three that's uh, feeding in the power. And pin three is right here and it goes into this ceramic cap. First thing on there is a ceramic cap. That don't sound too good. It sounds like it might be shorted. 
we look at this cap, it almost looks like it's burnt. If you look at the end of it here, oh, it's not, camera's not going to focus right, but it just doesn't, look at how dark the, uh, the end of this is compared to the other side. I'm just going to remove this and see whether the short goes away and see whether maybe this, something in this circuit here, one of the regulators in here off of here is where the problem is because it also, the, the 15 volts goes to the multiple regulators for like the 3.3 and the 1.8 volts. It's also passing over to the S, uh, the SC scan board, but when that connector is disconnected, the short remains. So, uh, something on this board here. So I'm going to remove this little cap and see whether uh, removing this little cap will remove the short. There, okay, we've removed that cap. These ceramic caps are, have been known to short out for no good reason. As this one has shorted. Excellent. Is my short gone here? My short is gone. Let's just try powering this setup without that cap in place and see whether this thing starts. This is interesting. Okay, board's back in. Moment of truth. Uh, I don't know. What should I do? Should I turn it on? Hmm. I like that. Oh, TV's disabled. Let's uh, let's enable TV. Guess what? It works, guys. It works. Um, go to the menu. I'm gonna just enable the tuner on this thing and uh, search out my uh, channels. Let's see here. How do I do this? Antenna input labels. I think that's it. And where's the video? Where's the TV? TV is disabled here. Gotta go into auto program. And I'm just going to search the digital only channels just because I have it just hooked up to an antenna. We'll let this thing scan and see how this thing looks. But hey, this TV is going to work. Love it. Problem one stupid shorted little ceramic cap in the 15 volt, the input to the regulators. There we go. I just I just tuned in the local. Uh, uh, this antenna that I'm using is a. Uh, is, is not very strong it's just pointed towards uh, the station in Bellingham so I'm only going to pick up the 12.1, the 12.2, 12.3, 12.4 and 12.5 but hey it's it's just showing that it's working yeah I can leave that on I don't think I have to worry about any copyright on that but uh, hey the set looks like it's working great looks like it's working great so now what I got to do is I'm gonna I'm going to uh, actually replace that little capacitor just so that you guys that are ready to hit that thumbs down button because I didn't replace it I'm gonna replace it but I'm just gonna put a little ceramic cap on but I'm not gonna bother showing you guys that because you know you'll have to take my word for it that I'm changing it it's my TV anyway I'm not gonna part with this set because uh, it's got a great picture it's a 46 inch uh, Panasonic plasma 1080p these were a great TV this thing's got a fantastic picture on it I'm going to be hanging on to this one for sure. Look at color bars. They're beautiful. Absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect color. You can see some dot crawl here because it's a composite signal going in. But that looks fantastic. Before I put it together, I'm going to go and grab something uh, to play some of my own content. And I'll put one of my own... Uh, I'll put one of my own videos up here and we'll uh, take a look and see how it looks. So I'm just going to go grab a media player and we'll get some content playing. We'll see what some of my stuff looks like on this set before I put it together. Well, I can certainly play this.
I don't have to worry about uh, YouTube getting upset with this because this is my own content and uh, it looks fantastic. Now remember folks, this TV was given to me. It was thrown out by a client at work. I was doing some work at their house and I noticed that they had uh, taken their other TV from the other room and put it in their living room and then, hey, what happened to your plasma? Oh, it died. We're just gonna take it down to the recycling center. I said, well, if you don't want it, I'll take it off your hands. So they said, sure, take it. So I picked this up a few months ago. It's just been sitting on the floor waiting for me to find time to fix it. And say a couple of hours of work I'm not going to say this was a, a was a real, real easy one to find because when you get these shutdowns like this, you know, I had to find a schematic for it. And it was basically isolate where the problem could be. But uh, here we go, simple problem, shorted capacitor in the uh, 15 volt line. And that's all it was. TV's running, picture quality. Well, hey, it's a plasma. It looks fantastic. Love it. Nice 46 inch too, so it's uh, you know a little bit bigger than uh, than most of them. But uh, I think Panasonic was one of the few companies that made 46. A lot of people made 40. A lot of companies made 42. Panasonic also made a 37 inch as well, which are rare as hen's teeth because they didn't sell a lot of them because they were expensive and uh, you know they were smaller. But I've only seen one 37 inch. But um, a lot of 42s, tons of 42s. That was a pretty standard size. 46 wasn't that popular, either was 48. 50 inch was the next size up. Uh, I think Samsung had some 51 inch, and then there was some 60s and, uh, and uh, 63s and so forth, and the biggest was the 65. The consumer ones were 65. And then, of course, they had a monster 104 inch, but that's only for the ultra rich. Here's my aquarium. This is actually my aquarium. But uh, the music that's on here, though, is not royalty free, so I'm going to have to shut that one off. But um, that's what my aquarium looked like at one time. Unfortunately, I, I wish it still looked like that today, but uh, it doesn't. I'm down to most of my corals have long since uh, expired. And uh, I'm down to a half a dozen or so fish. And I'm just waiting for the fish to uh, to finally die. Most like this was done many years ago. I've had this aquarium for probably about, I don't know, 16 years, I guess now. Um, had it for a while. The, the problem with saltwater fish is that they live for a long, long, long time. Some of these fish will live, you know, 30, 40 years. So I'm not replacing any of them. I'm just letting them die of old age so that I can take the tank down. And then what I plan to do is where the tank was, I was going to mount a TV on the wall and just have the aquarium playing on it, just so that I can look at the uh, look at what was there. Anyway, looking great. I'd say this thing's got a fantastic picture. I'm going to uh, put that capacitor back in. You'll have to trust me that I'm going to do it and uh, put the back on this set because this one's done. Hope you guys learned something on these plasma sets. They are uh, scary for sure, but not that scary. Thanks for watching. We'll uh, catch you in the next one real soon. Bye for now.